Hello, everybody. Hope you're all having a great day. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888, and uh, thanks for tuning back in here today. Um, I'm going to read another sort of op-ed here, but this one, um, it, it just really highlights the hypocrisy that the ATF has, has been guilty of in so many situations, and this is just one of many examples. And it has to do with the uh, congressional hearing the other day that, that Stephen Diddlebach was, you know, of course, in there giving testimony and answering a bunch of questions in front of Congress, and we're going to get into this one. Um, it has to do with Congressman Matt Gatz uh, grills ATF Director Stephen Diddlebach. Um, this is from April 27th by Thomas Conroy here on Ammo Land. Um, great group of people, by the way. Make sure you're checking them out for sure. Uh, a quick shameless plug, all right, shameless self-promotion, uh, if I may, real quick. Uh, I would like to thank our friends at Argos Ordnance. Now, when I say my friends at Argos Ordnance, what I mean is freaking Chad, okay? Chad is building these guns now, and they are amazing. If you are wanting to, you know, support the channel, support Chad's family, you know, do us a solid and buy a gun through us, uh, we would definitely appreciate it. We're getting into making suppressors. We got a bunch of awesome things that we're going to be doing with the company. We're going to be offering a ton of different configurations we offer currently an 18-inch SPR that is absolutely epic. We're using the rifle speed gas blocks, Geisley triggers, good rail system, you know, good quality springs, you know, good quality bolt carrier and bolt. Um, just really taking the care to put these guns together properly. And uh, Chad really knows a thing or two about ARs, and we've had a lot of requests from you guys to have us build guns. And so now you can get guns right here from Locust Grove, Georgia, built by... The, the guru himself, okay, but uh, check them out, Argos Ordnance. Follow me on Twitter for more information. Um, you definitely want to make sure you follow me on Twitter anyway because we got a lot of crazy things going on. So without further ado, we're going to get right into this. Washington, D.C. In a heated exchange during the House Judiciary Committee's oversight hearing of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, Congressman Matt Gatz questioned ATF Director Stephen Diddlebach about the agency's loss of firearms and non-compliance with regulations. Reading from a story, instigative journalist from Ammolan News uh, broke titled ATF, The Enforcer of Gun Laws Lost Thousands to Thieves. Gatz asked Diddlebach how many guns the ATF had lost, to which Diddlebach responded that he was unsure of the question's context. Gatz then referred to the source report by the Office of Inspector General that revealed thousands of firearms, firearm parts, and um, Diddlebach clarified that no guns were lost but were stolen by an individual who is not an ATF agent and that the ATF had implemented numerous safety measures in response to the incident. Gatz then referred to a Government Accountability Office report. Gatz questioned Diddlebach about the ATF's failure to follow the recommendations of the Office of Inspector General in a Government Accountability Office report, questioning why the agency had not adhered to its own policies. This is quoting straight from it. There were recommendations made on what you should do so that you don't become the victim of the theft, and the Inspector General saying you're not following them. I'm quoting directly from the Inspector General's report. Thousands of firearms firearm parts, and ammunition have been stolen from the ATF. Diddlebach deflected, saying that the agency had implemented numerous safety measures and that the Inspector General's report was from several years ago. Gatz also questioned Diddlebach about the ATF's deletion of firearms purchase records that were not lawfully obtained. <clears throat> you keep records that you're not supposed to? It was a quarter million of them, and you had to delete those, right? Was it over 200,000 you had to delete? I just want to know the number of records you had to delete that were not being lawfully maintained. Continuing, that's what you guys, um, that's what you guys do. You keep what you shouldn't. Diddlebach defensively responded that reports or records had not been searched and did not recall the exact number of records deleted. Concerning a report by Ammo Land News from August 11th, 2022, entitled Family-Owned Legacy Gun Shop, Latest Casualty of Biden's War on Guns, unquote. Congressman Matt Gatz read a related letter from one of his constituents, a firearms dealer who had been in the business for 46 years. 
The dealer had completed a background check on a customer, which the Florida Department of Law Enforcement approved. However, the ATF later deemed it a non-approval and revoked the dealer's license for releasing the firearm. Gass accused the ATF of destroying the livelihood of a law-abiding citizen over a technicality. Dittelbach responded that Congress granted the ATF's authority to inspect firearms dealers and ensure their compliance. He also stated that the vast majority of firearms dealers were compliant and were the first line of defense against straw purchases. Gatz accused the ATF of being hypocritical for imposing a zero-tolerance policy that resulted in the highest rate of federal firearms license revocations in 16 years while the agency could not live up to its own standards. The hearing ended without any resolutions to the issues raised by Gatz. The recent oversight hearing of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has shed more light on the agency's continued noncompliance with even its own regulations and failure to follow recommendations from the Office of Inspector General and Government Accountability Office reports. The hearing revealed several concerns about the ATF's ability, or inability rather, <laughs> to enforce regulations effectively and lawfully. The issues raised by Ammo Land News and Congressman Gatz require further investigation and resolution to ensure that the ATF is operating within the bounds of the law and protecting public safety. Wow. You know, and again, I wanted to share this because I just thought it was great, you know. And, and look, Congressman Massey brought up some really good points. Um, you know, I, I just, it is just crazy the way that all of this has gone on. And, you know, I did ask Congressman Massey the other day on Twitter. Uh, I actually had a Twitter post that, that got a fair amount of traffic where I was just basically kind of asking Massey, like, hey, what, what the heck are we going to do? Okay, we know... Uh, that they're abusing Chevron deference. Uh, we know that they are not even following their own regulations. Now, is, is that to say that at some deep, you know, level that some of them, you know, maybe they feel like they're doing the right thing or maybe they they just don't see the error in their ways? I, you know, it's really difficult to give a group of people like the ATF the benefit of the doubt. Because when you look at something like the original brace rule, for instance, and you look at that brace worksheet, and all the time and effort that they put into that document. Um, look, that took a lot of thinking on their part. And it took a lot of, of pretty brilliant minds to be able to compile all of that information into such a, a way that, you know, that they could sort of codify like what they're trying to do. I'm not suggesting I agree with it, but I'm saying we're, we're not dealing with people that are dumb, okay? Like they know what they're doing. So it, it's not fair and not even morally permissible to give them the benefit of the doubt and go, well, maybe they just didn't know. They know. They know. And, you know, there were some things that Diddlebach said in that hearing that, that you know, you know, he claims, oh, well, I, you know, the Second Amendment is part of our Constitution. And, you know, he, he kind of played the politician sort of song and dance of trying to appeal to, you know, that question that was asked of him, like, you know, do you think that the citizens have the right to the Second Amendment? Would you appeal the Second Amendment? Do you think that, you know, ARs and braces and whatnot are, are covered under the Second Amendment and protected by the Second Amendment? And those are really hot button questions that can really get under a person's skin if they're, you know, using their law enforcement capacity uh, in more of a political way. I mean, remember, when we look at justice, right, Lady Justice is blind. She has a blindfold on. And she holds a scale of justice, right? Justice is supposed to be blind. The Constitution is supposed to be blind. Our government, you know, let's just say mechanism is supposed to be blind to, you know, any type of, you know what I mean? Like outside influence. Like the law is what the law is. The Constitution is what the Constitution is. We have checks and balances for a reason. So to be fair... And I'm not suggesting that I agree with anything they did by saying this, but to be fair, you know, when a law enforcement agency like the ATF is given a directive, um, just like when they were given a directive by, you know, former President Trump to ban bump stocks, and I know people give me grief for bringing that up, but look, you have to be critical of these people and their actions, right? Trump gave them, the, the directed them to do something on bump stocks. So well, what are they going to do? You got to order from the president. You, you're a law enforcement agency. You have to do, you know, what, what the president directs you to do, you know? And is that to say that maybe, okay, well, Biden told them they want to you know, move on braces or move on framing, the frame and receiver rule or whatever other type of infringement that they might have in mind. 
again, there might be people at the ATF that think it's a terrible idea, that think it's a bad PR move, or they could be the most narcissistic, self-centered buttholes you've ever seen in your life, and they just simply don't care about the little guy. But I think, as a lot of situations in life tend to point in the direction of, I think that the truth is somewhere in the middle. And there is a lot of information that gets leaked out of the ATF. There is a, you know, there are some good people there that care. And, you know, again, I, I always go back to, you know, I feel like people are inheritedly good. And that includes even people that I very much disagree with. Like, yeah, has the FBI really screwed the pooch on all of things? Oh, yeah, they have. All this snooping and all this warrantless searching and all this crazy stuff. I don't agree with it, and I, and I think it's terrible. But is that to say that it, at a principled level that there's not still some good people there? I mean, I want to believe there are. I really do want to believe it. I want to believe that people are inheritedly good. But after a while, you know... <laughs> Fool, fool me once, shame on me, right? Or, or shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. I always get that quote wrong, and Bush got it wrong too. But anyway, the point remains that, you know, after a while, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck, and there's nothing that you can do to change it. And, you know, I just wanted to share this particular uh, little op-ed here because it kind of gave some insight into uh, some of the questions that the ATF was being asked. And, you know, it it is absolutely... <laughs> full of hypocrisy when, again, I'm surprised that Fast and Furious didn't come up. Okay, so you've got this gun running operation. If you're not familiar with it, look up Fast and Furious. Um, Fast and Furious was a gun running operation. The ATF themselves and multiple government agencies, they were involved in this gun running operation and they were sending guns over the border and trying to trace them. And I think the idea is that they were trying to figure out like where the supply lines ended. Like, it was a legitimate law enforcement effort, but it kind of backfired and, and ended up getting, I think, not one, but two Border Patrol agents were killed with guns that were, you know, sent around in these transactions. So basically, the ATF would have, I don't know whether it was evidence guns or maybe they went and bought guns or they had, you know, guns they somehow acquired and then they purposely put them out into criminal circles and sort of, you know, in a shakedown type of operation. It was called Fast and Furious. But you want to talk about the ATF losing guns. Now, I'm not going to doubt that Diddlebach, you know, didn't answer the question as truthfully as he possibly could, but, you know, there's a lot of situations where our government, you know, arms all kinds of people all around the world. I mean, look at, you know, Bay of Pigs. I mean, like when they tried to invade Cuba and they send down there with all kind of, you know, military weaponry and stuff. Of course, that was a giant fiasco. But think about all of the situations where our government arms people all around the world, right? So I just think it's strange where, you know, they lose guns, there's no accountability, you know what I mean? So it's just the hypocrisy knows no bounds, and this is just one of many examples. And I want to believe that this situation is going to have some form of a peaceful revolution. Or Oh, did I, was there a little bit of a Freudian slip there? A peaceful resolution hopefully, will will come of this. And, you know, look, I, I, I do, at the end of the day, I feel like people are inheritedly good. I feel like even some people who are engaged in things that we, we can't quite understand the, the greater meaning of, you know, they feel like they're doing the right thing. And I really do want to believe that it's not a, you know, let's just say coming from a place of, you know, tyranny like we like we want to believe. I mean, I, I try to... to look at the bright side and try to assume that people want to do the right thing. But again, as I said, after a while, you, you kind of have to call it for what it is. And it's, it really is concerning to me, the behavior of these alphabet agencies and the kind of things that they're doing and, and getting away with. And they're given full cover and latitude to do these things uh, by the greater government at large. And that's a scary thing that we should not support. I mean, there, there may be things that I don't agree with, um, as a southern average guy, uh, gun owner, what have you, right? Um, but at the end of the day, um, I care about personal liberty. I care about personal freedom. And firearms are the teeth that give us the ability to protect the rest of our freedoms and to give our words a meaning. Um, the First Amendment protects offensive speech. If the speech was not offensive and didn't you know, bother anybody, you wouldn't need the First Amendment anyway, right? So the First Amendment absolutely does protect offensive things. So, you know, I just wanted to share this op-ed. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
many, many more videos on the way. And okay, in, in terms of Chevron deference, I'm actually about to cut another video uh, where the Supreme Court is actually probably about to shoot down the whole Chevron deference rulemaking uh, loophole anyway. We'll get into that in a future video. But uh, thank you so much. Many more videos on the way. And again, check out Argos Ordnance. Chad makes a fine AR. You will not find a better gun that is more well-equipped for the money. Um, you know, yeah, they are a little bit more on the pricey side. We are going to be offering, you know, some more baseline uh, kind of rifleman models. Uh, however, uh, I think once you start looking at the specs on those guns, you'll see that they are very much worth the money. And uh, we also offer uh, a sub-MOA guarantee on every single gun. If you use good ammo, they will absolutely shoot sub-MOA all day long. So uh, that's those uh, ballistic advantage barrels. Uh, so very good quality barrels that we put in those ARs. But check them out, Argos Ordnance. And make sure, again, that you follow me on Twitter. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon.